All right, welcome to the Chaz Palminteri Podcast today. Today we got a big show for you, big show today. But before we do that, I got some stuff I want to talk to you about. This here, this is a Bronx Tale uh, vintage style-like poster. That uh, We have five of them, five of them. And we're going to, we're approaching 20,000 subscribers. So I'm going to give these to a subscriber. So you got to subscribe. When I hit 20,000, I'm going to give away five of these classic posters here. Signed by me. So uh, subscribe to my channel. Hit that subscribe button, the like button. And uh, you're eligible to win one of these posters. Also, a Bronx Tale merchandise just came out. Yeah, we have... Uh, this is, so many people have been requesting this because I do it on my one-man show. I sell this at my one-man show, chazpalmetary.net, if you want to see where my one-man show is. But now we're going to be doing it online. We have hats, a Bronx Tale hats right here on the back. This says, now you can't leave. This says, the saddest thing in life is wasted time. We have uh, different sizes, different colors. A few more things. Check this out here. This is my son's idea. We have Bronx Tale t-shirts, and on the back, <laughs> we have that image. I think it's great. Saddest thing in life is wasted talent. So, uh, and we have uh, hoodies. We have, oh, that's right, hoodies. Now you just can't leave, the hoodie. And on the back, a Bronx Tale. We have zipper and pullover. So if you like to purchase some of this, Go to bronxtail.net, and you can pick up the stuff. Oh, you can come and see the one-man show. We'll be selling it there at the box office. Uh, so today is going to be a great show because this is going to be life lessons again. Life, life lessons. You know, my dad, who said to me, the saddest thing in life is wasted talent. I like to talk about that. Here we go. Saddest thing in life is wasted talent. That's the card my father gave me. So this is called, this episode is called Life Lessons from a Bronx Tale. What are the lessons that we learned from a Bronx Tale? Uh, let's see. Patience. Would you say patience is the first one? Yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah, you guys can come in and sit down if you want. Patience is the first one, right? Okay, so I would say that's the number one lesson for a Bronx Tale is patience. Uh, so and when people say, well, Chaz, what do you mean by that's a lesson, patience? I would say, well, look at the parking spot when they were parking the guys, right? I would say uh, while they were parking, right? Now, we still don't know what they were fighting over a parking space. I still don't know that. But have you ever been in fighting over a parking space yourself? You know, you're just about to park and some guy gets it ahead of you. Till this day, after, see, after that happened to me when I was a young boy, I can never jump out of a car if somebody steals my parking space. I know that sounds crazy. I just can't do it. And I'll tell you the reason why. Because 10 seconds of patience could save a lifetime of misery, if you know what I'm saying. 10 seconds of patience. And what I mean by that is, and not just for a parking space, how many times you're with your wife, your kids, and somebody does something stupid, and you're about to, like, crack somebody or really get upset, Sometimes you just got to say to yourself, you know what? Have a little patience. It's going to be okay. But it's so easy, but it's so hard. Think about it. Ten seconds of a little patience could save a lifetime of misery. So I would say that's really the first lesson, life lesson you got from a Bronx. Well, I love that because I don't know. Recently, if you saw the article, a woman in Alabama her kid was getting bullied on the school bus and she freaked out and went and beat the hell out of a little kid. And now she, I think she's going to lose her kid and go to jail. Are you kidding? No. Wow. So if you're just patient through every situation, maybe you won't wow. uh, lose everything. Now, if she was just a little patient through that, uh, it would have been fine. I mean, look, she, a kid was getting bullied. That's a serious thing. I, I admit that. But Jesus, God. What she did was out of order. I mean, that, you can't do that. But again, if she had some patience, everything would have been all right. All right, so let's get to another life lesson in Bronx Tale. So many people say, Chaz, talk about the life lessons of Bronx Tale. And that's why we're doing this right now. Uh, $20 to get rid of them. 
What would you say? I mean, that's another life lesson, right, Pim? That's my favorite one. Is that your favorite one? That's my favorite one. Where, if you remember the movie where Claude Joe is really crazy, he's really pissed off. He's saying, Sonny, I'm going to crack this guy. He, he's making me look bad. And Sonny said to him, he goes, hey, he's never going to bother you again. He's never going to ask you for money again. He's out of your life for $20. Forget about it. So let's put that today. You know, sometimes you get beat for $100, $1,000. Some big-time guys get beat for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Is it easy to walk away? Probably not. But you know what? The guy can never ask you for money again. He's never going to bother you again. He's out of your life. That's it. So it costs you whatever, $20 to $100,000 to learn a lesson, right? Right, Pim? Yeah, so, that, I mean, I carry that with me all the time. I have I used to work with rappers, and they still owe me money, but you don't want to... <laughs> it, it's just better off to burn. You know the what? Bridge. They're not going to ask you again to work for them because they owe you money, right? Yeah. yeah. So they did you a favor. <laughs> they did you a favor. Life lessons. It's one of those life lessons that you learn from Bronx Tale. They did you a favor. And, right? and the people who don't let the money go and chase it, it always ends up costing you time, which you never get back anyway. It costs you time. It costs you money. And it could cost you your life if it's the wrong people. <laughs> You know, you can end up getting a beating or something, you know. Yeah, that's like one thing I've noticed. A lot of people love to waste time nowadays. Like, do you have any advice on for people who are addicted to wasting their time? How do you constructively use your time? Well, I, I learned that the, the best way to construct your time is to plan your day the day before. If you plan your day the day before, you'll make most use of, of the time. Think about it. When you go to the supermarket, right? You say to yourself, oh, I got to make a list. So you make a list of everything that you need. You walk in, you look at the list, you go, hmm, I need olives, okay? Ah, I need macaroni. Where's the, where's the macaroni? Ah, I need fruit. Ah, uh, uh, you know what? I need uh, salad, right? I need strawberries. You make a list and you go to each one of those things. And then you're out of there. You're out of the supermarket in like, you know, half hour. As opposed to walking in the supermarkets going, ah, what do I need? Do I need olives? Ah, and you got to go through each aisle. So that's the way life is. So if you make up a list the day before of what you have to do, you wake up in the morning and you just go, hey, okay. Today I got to like take care of my laundry. I got to work out at nine. I got to make myself breakfast. I got to take my shake. I got to call these people back. I have to go pick up my clean, uh, dry cleaners. And, and if you make your day like that, you're not wasting your life. Yeah, it's like something you said on the phone to me. Like, if you don't plant the seeds today, nothing will ever grow. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, uh, the, the great coach from UCLA, John Wooden, had that incredible thing that he said. If you, if you, if, if you don't prepare to fail, you're failing what was that? I can't remember. Fail to prepare. If you fail, if you, to if you fail to prepare, you pre you're preparing to fail. If you Love fail that. to prepare, you're preparing to fail. And you know what? He's right. He's right about that. I mean, John Wooden, who has this great book. I mean, it just but that was one of his great uh, quotes, and uh, it's true. So, if you really have a big day to do. Make sure that you prepare and you write about it. Tomorrow I got to do this, you know. What would be your advice? Because I know a lot of people who are failures who blame everyone else for their failures. How, how do you cope with, how yeah. do you get out of failing? Well, there are many people in life who blame their life. They say, oh, you know, I never caught a break. You know what? I'm sorry. Everybody catches breaks, but you just can't wait for a break. You have to go out there and get it. You have, to, you have to go out there and make your own breaks. I know that's a cliche, but you have to. You know, 95% of life is just showing up. Show up, and sometimes breaks happen. You know, don't, you know, don't always think of yourself that you're living in a black cloud and nothing ever good happens to me. I had a friend who used to say that. Uh, I never caught a break in my life. Bullshit. Bullshit. You caught a break. You caught breaks in your life. You're just too much of an asshole to see that. <laughs> or you just treated people like an asshole. And you know what? People don't dig it. Sometimes people want to give you breaks, but if you're an asshole, people go, you know what? Pass Sedina on him. I don't need him. 
I don't need them and I don't want it. And they're right, right, Pimp? I mean, 100% right. They're right. I mean, how many times? I mean, life is hard when everything is great. I got to deal with people who are assholes? No. You know, it's the old thing, life is too short. I put them on the life is too short list. I don't want to deal yeah, with if, them. If you push I, negative people out of your life, it'll only improve. I don't know why people are addicted to being negative. I, I, Pimp, 100% right. Negative people are infectious. It's like, it's like COVID. It's like a disease. You get that shit near you. And, you know, it's the thing I said on many other episodes. I said, always remember, you can never bring somebody up in life. Never. But the opposite is not true. Someone could bring you down in life. So what does that mean, folks? That means the negative is, is obviously stronger than the, than the positive. Believe me, I come from 187 in Belmont. There was a lot of fucking <laughs> negative people there. Negative guys who will take you down. And when, a guys, when, got, when my friends used to say, ah, come on, Chaz, don't worry about it. When they say the words, don't worry, that's the time to fucking worry. <laughs> That's the time to worry. When street guys, they say, don't worry, please. That's the time you got to worry the most. Yeah, were the wise guys like negative or were they always kind of optimistic? Well, you know what? Most of them were negative. Most of them were. But, but like a guy like Sonny, he was positive. Okay. He was positive. Well, he was a boy, so I guess that's why. <laughs> yeah, I bet. He had money coming in, so he didn't give a shit, you know. So, but, but that's a good, uh, that's another, that's a very good life lesson. Let's, uh, another life lesson uh, is in Bronx Tale is peer pressure. When you say that, Pimp, oh, peer yeah. pressure. Let's just another life lesson in Bronx Tale. Like I always tell people, and people know that in Bronx Tale, when I wrote it, uh, when they when they pulled up in the car, I never got in the car. The truth is, I embellished that that Sonny pulled me out. But what really happened was, I never got in. Because I remember when they pulled up, they said, hey, AC, come on, get in. And I looked at the car, and I didn't recognize it, and I put my foot in the car door, and I said, where'd you get the car? And they said, no, no, we, we borrowed it, and they all started laughing. I actually put that line <laughs> in the movie. But I smelled the gas, and I said, no. And, you know, I, and they were going to call me a punk, a chicken, a dog. But I thought of my mom and dad, and I said, you know what? I'm not going in this car. And I didn't. And you know what happened? I mean, obviously, they died. Now, if I would have felt the peer pressure, that would have been it. I would have been, like, done, okay? Well, what, what ruins more lives than peer pressure? Probably nothing. 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 And, and you know what, Pimp? And you would talk about this better because you know more about it than social media than I do. But talk about these kids today with peer pressure. I mean, I think everyone's a victim of peer pressure, even to get married, even to have this union job. Everyone pressures you into doing everything in life. So you're always a victim of peer pressure. These little kids, it just came out now that Facebook is fully aware of how negative Instagram is on the teenage mind and that people get stunted and they won't grow past their insecurities because of Instagram. Wow. I didn't know that. I mean, so you could actually say that the internet is actually bad for these kids, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a drug dealer. The internet's a drug dealer for ego. A drug dealer for ego. Wow. Pimp, I like that. That's Homeless Pimp, who's my producer, and he is just... You should check him out on his website and his Twitter. He's terrific. And, uh, and you know, that's so true. And so, so some of these kids... I've seen kids where mothers go, my child won't come out of the house. And I say, why? They say, Chaz, could you talk to her? She's 14 years old. And I say, wait a minute, I, I'm not her father. What about you and what about you and your husband? They say they they were bullying her or bad mouthing her on Instagram and Facebook. She's depressed. She won't come out of the house, Pim. I mean, come on, guys. I mean, and that's what happens. They push you get so isolated and you see everyone else having fun, but nobody's really having fun. They all want you to feel like they're having fun. It's a trick. It's a card trick. Wow. But you know what happens to these kids, and I tell all the parents out there, if you have kids this age, is, is you, please don't, don't let them get on this thing. Look, do I use the internet? Of course I do. Do I, I go have Instagram? Do I have a website? Yes. But, you know, have people said bad things about me? Of course they did have. 
I've been re- I've been in, I've been famous for 35 years. I've been reviewed, I've been praised, and I've been slaughtered. But that's the way it goes. Yeah, people absorb too much of this now. Don't absorb other people's energies. Don't absorb other people's energy. I think you're right. And you know what? That's a great thing, uh, uh, Pimp, because that brings us to another life lesson. And what that life lesson is, what did Sonny say in Bronxdale? Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody cares. That's what really, really counts. Is you think everybody cares. I want to tell that young lady, I won't say her name. Do you think people really care about this and about uh, your friends don't want to talk to you? That's bullshit. (laughs) In the end, nobody cares, right? So live your life and don't worry about bullshit like that. Nobody cares. And, And it's true. How many times have I said that? What are you worried about? Nobody cares. It's true, man. It's the I live my life with that in my head, thanks to Sonny. Yeah, I mean, O.J. Simpson two, killed two people. He's walking around playing golf. <laughs> Nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> right? It's so true, man. It's Nobody so- cares. They got killed two fucking people. Nobody cares, folks. And you're worried about because you said something and people are worried. Come on, stop it. Yeah, everyone, some people just let themselves live in this box of they're be afraid of being judged. They're afraid of being judged. That's right. You're right. I mean, th- I mean, look at TikTok. Oh, my God. I mean, you got these people on it. They're famous for being famous. <laughs> they have 60, 80, 90 million followers. That's insane. I'm not putting them down. And I'm look, you know, you people would say, oh, sour grapes, Chaz, you're jealous. Of course not. Of course I'm not jealous. I'm saying... Great, but you know what? There's going to be a time when that's not there no more. So you're going to have to stand on your own two feet. You're going to have to stand on your own talent, what you have. It's great to be on TikTok. It's great to have 90 million followers, but everything changes. Everything. If I ask a young kid today, who's James Cagney? Who's Humphrey Bogart? Those were the biggest stars in the world at one time. You know what's somebody going to say? Who are they? Who's that? And that's the same thing. That's but you know what? But they have their movies to live on. A lot of these TikTok people, you know, in ten years from now, what are they going to have? They're going to have a lot of money, and that's okay. And I hope they save their money and they do very well. And I don't begrudge them that. I look at the, the Kardashians. Hey, people put them down, but you know what I say? Great entrepreneurs. Oh, yeah. Great entrepreneurs. They took, the, they took the, that, that thing and they ran with it. They built a, an incredible dynasty. They're all very wealthy. And I say, hats off to them. Yeah, and they changed the world. Every program now is a version of their show. Absolutely, and they changed the world. And you know what? In five, ten years, whatever, when, when it's gone, they'll be happy and they'll move on to other things. So I, I tell the TikTok generation and the internet generation, if you're fortunate to make money, put it away. Because you know what happens to, there's like five versions of somebody who's famous. Okay, and I'll, I'll use myself as an example. Okay, every actor starts off with five, it starts off with five phases. Here's the first phase. Who's Chaz Palminteri? The second phase. What's Chaz Palminteri's availability? The third phase, I must have Chaz Palminteri. The fourth phase, get me a young Chaz Palminteri. The fifth uh, phase, whatever happened to Chaz Palminteri? That's every (laughs) actor's, that's the way it is, folks. So do something with your life. Make something out of your life. And uh, that actually brings me to my favorite lesson from A Bronx Tale, which is the De Niro character... Right. Kind of taught me to surrender to your role. Don't want more than who you are. Exactly. Exactly. So many life lessons from a Bronx tale. I mean, let's uh, another lesson from a Bronx tale that people want to talk about. The importance of family. I believe that, right? I mean, think about that. The importance of family. His father's advice. Cologio, right? Lorenzo's 
advice to his to, to his son Kolojo. The working man, he's the tough guy. Think about that. That's one of the resonant. Li- uh, that's a, that's a line that just resonates through the whole mil- movie. The working man's the tough guy. That's what Lorenzo said. It doesn't take much strength to pull the trigger, but try to get up every morning and go to work for a living. That's a tough guy. That's a hero. Not a guy who's just some wise guy, okay? So I think that's an important lesson, wouldn't you say, Pimp? Oh, it's amazing. I mean, the TikTok kids are sunny. They're just going with the glamorous route instead of really working in this world. Right. That's true. I mean, look, the glamour, glamour is, uh, it's great. But you know what? To be famous for being famous, I think you got to do something with your life. Now, if you just want to collect as much money as you can, then I guess... You achieve something, but also you you've seen top level fame. I also believe fame is there's it's empty at the top. You chase it and then there's nothing there. Well, it's that thing. What fame is fleeting, you know. Fame is fleeting. You know. You see, I take my work seriously, my acting, my writing, my directing. But my advice to people is take the work seriously. Don't take the fame seriously. If you take the fame seriously, it will come back to bite you in the ass because nobody's famous forever. And sooner or later, if you start believing all the things you're reading about how great you are, when you read about that one thing that somebody says that's bad, I notice artists, you can read a hundred things that are great. You read the one thing that's bad, that's the one you focus on. That's just the way the mind is. Every time, every time. Every even, time. Even these poor teenagers, they don't listen to all their friends saying you look great. They listen to the one bully in their class commenting you're ugly. Bullying. Oh, my God. I mean, you want to talk... I, mean, we, I know I did an episode on bullying where, you know, especially on internet, the internet bullying is terrible, right? We're, we're in a golden age of bullying. This is like the This is like the steroid age of bullying, Yeah. right? All these kids, they write and... Your, your children cry and your son or your daughter, they said these things about me. You know what I got to say to them? Please, and tell them, nobody cares. <laughs> it's bullshit. It's all bullshit. Nobody cares. I mean, we, we have these old school episodes, you know, that we're going to be having more of. And you talk to these old school guys and they're all the same. They don't know about the end. They don't give a shit. You know and, but they, I talk about them and their children, and they say, yeah, the kids, you know, they're all into this, you know. Um, all right, let's get a th- another lesson from Bronx Tale. Is it better to be loved or feared? That's a good question. It's a hard one. It's a hard one. Well, I always say, if you're sunny, I guess it's better to be feared. If you're Lorenzo and his family, if you're a normal person, if you're Chas Palminteri, if you're homeless pimp, Right, my son, Dante Palmiterio, all of you guys. It's better to be loved. Always. It's always better to be loved. But I guess if you're in Sonny's world, it's better to be feared. When you say that? I mean, for him, yeah, I mean, anyone in a position of power, you want to be feared, but then you're isolated. You're isolated. That's you're an correct. observer. You're not living. And then who do you trust? Nobody. Nobody. See, that's the problem when you're on the top. Who do you trust? You start to get paranoid because, especially in that position, in, in that in the mob circles, who gives you up? Your best friend. Like they say in Goodfellas, they don't come at you with with bats and guns. They come at you with a smile. Remember that in Goodfellas. Always. They come at you with a smile because you know you you're, you're looking to get somebody's looking to clip you, so you don't trust anybody. But who do you trust? You trust your friend. And you would think enough guys would know that. <laughs> but that's how devious this world is, you know? Everyone thinks it's different for them. Everybody thinks that they're going to be different. I mean, why would you want to be a wise guy? You put a target on your back, really. I don't know. The same for the TikTok kids. I, I wouldn't want to be them. It sounds like a prison. Well, yeah, but I mean, but at least they're making, they're making a lot of money. So were the wise guys. That's true. <laughs> I didn't think of it like that. So were the wise guys. So we got that life lesson out of the way. Is it better to be loved 
I feel it. My favorite one, uh, the life lesson is you get a few great ones. Oh, that's a great one. Now, I, you know what people say, Chance, well, how do you know it's only you get three great women in your lifetime? Because I, you know how I got that from? By speaking to people. I, I used to ask guys when I was younger, and Sonny was the one who said that, like, how many times have you been in love in your life? Think about it. How many times have you really been in love in your life? Just count it. Once, twice, three times, maybe three times. If you're in love, if you say, oh, I've been in love eight times, then you're full of shit. Then obviously you've never been in love. You don't know what love is. But I would say, like Sonny Tokolojo, you get three great women in your lifetime. That's it. That's it. They come along like the great fighters once every 10 years. I'm doing the play over it's here. It's so great. It's such a great line. It's such a great line. And they, you know, they come along like uh, the, the great fighters, you know. And he, sa- he tells them that. So he says when you f- – one thing I, I, I learned about when you meet a great woman in your life or a great guy, I tell the ladies out there, don't be so easy throwing them away because you never know when love might not come back. Don't be so easy throwing love away, Pim. <laughs> <laughs> you never know when that love might come back. There's, there's something to the rule of threes. I feel like everything in the universe loves three. Even storytelling is threes, beginning, middle, end. Even storytelling, yes. Beginning, middle, end. Yeah. Even comedy's in threes. Everything's in threes. Comedy's in threes. The universe loves three. The universe loves threes. You're right. I like that. Um, let's get another, uh, let's get a few more before we, uh, end this Uh, availability, availability. That's another life lesson. Now, when I say availability, what do we mean by availability? That if you're a boss, not not necessarily, you don't have to be a wise guy. How it is when I'm sure you own a restaurant, if somebody owns a restaurant, a bar, uh, a diner, you know how it is when the boss not there. When the boss is not there, nobody works the same. I'm sorry. I don't give a shit what you think. Oh, I got a great manager. I got great people. I'm sure they might work great, but they don't work like hell when the bo- if the boss is not there. So, availability. If you own a company or you own something, you got to be there. You gotta be there as much as you could. Availability, and the reason why availability, because like Sonny said in a Bronx tale, because the people that, because the people that see me here every day, they feel safe. Because they know I'm close, and it gives them more reason to love me. Then he says, but the people that want to do otherwise, they think twice because they know I'm close. And it gives them more reason to fear me. That's genius. Think it's about genius. it. I mean, <laughs> wow. You know, availability. What's another one? Never rat. Never rat. Never rat on your friends. Because I tell you what, folks. Sometimes the rat is looked at worse than the guy who committed the crime. Because at least the guy who committed the crime, he's willing to do his time. You know, don't do the crime if you can't do the time. It's an old saying. You know what I mean? Another good one is sacrifice. How much are you willing to sacrifice? Everything comes with a sacrifice. Everything comes with a sacrifice. Everything. Everything, man. Because if you're not willing to sacrifice, forget about it. You know, you, you got to compromise in your life. You know, but sacrifice, I think, is very, very big. I mean... Never ratting. I think that was important. Because if I would have ratted on, on Sonny, I, I mean, I, I don't think he was going to whack me, not at that age, but it, it would have been hell probably for my family. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't oh, know. Yeah. What that bus would have been off a cliff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come to think of it, yeah, that wouldn't have been good for me. I think my mom and dad would have had to move out of the neighborhood, right? Oh, yeah. Right. Um, another life lesson from Bronx Tale, doing things for bad people. And that's a, that, and, and that goes to the ratting thing. Sometimes, I, 
I, I had a, when I said to my father, I did a good thing, right, Dad? And he said, you did a good thing for a bad man. I didn't understand that back then. But when I got older, my father was trying to say, yeah, you did a good thing, but it was a bad thing that you, you it was a good thing that you, you didn't rat on him, but it, w it wasn't a good thing that he did that. Because he wanted me to understand that, you know, and um, I, I, I guess it was, it was something that, um, that I, I never forgot, you know. Um, it's tough though, because I mean, in terms of the movie, it's easy, good, and bad, but in real life, you're always the villain to somebody. You're always somebody else's villain. Right, right. Let's see another thing from a Bronx Tale. Okay. Now, you got to remember now, this is the 60s, the Mario test. The Mario test. Now, we all know what the Mario test was. Now, why is that a life lesson? Well, I look at it this way. If somebody doesn't have respect for themselves, if they're willing to do something with a guy watching in a truck, I don't know, is that the girl you want to marry? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Did I just step out of bounds there? What do you think, Pimp? Am I out of bounds? Uh, we're on the think. edge out of bounds. We're getting there. I think I'm walking the tightrope here. Yeah, you're doing good. Yeah. I mean, the Mario test could be, you know, and I say a man too. If a man or a girl doesn't have respect for themselves in front of people, then I don't think you should, that's the type of woman you should settle down for. That's all. I mean. Um, the divorce rate is 50%. Does anybody really know? The, my son there who doesn't have a mic, he just yelled the divorce rate. It's 50%. Does anybody know the right to answer? I don't know. I don't know. It's like... Well, it goes back to peer pressure. Everyone's constantly changing partners on Instagram. Right. So now everyone just feels the need to make that normal. To make that normal. Another life lesson. I got it. Never underestimate your enemy. Never. That comes from the bar scene. The bikers walk in. They're these tough guys, they're breaking up bars, they're, nobody's bothering them, nobody's stopping them. And then one day, they just walked into the wrong bar. And it comes down to that life lesson, never mistake kindness for weakness. Never. Because sometimes you think somebody's kind, and you think, ah, I, could, I can get over on this guy. Because Sonny was a nice guy. But you know what? They walked into the wrong fucking bar. I was there. I was sitting at the bar when that happened. I saw Sonny when he said to them, that wasn't very nice. Now you're going to have to leave. Like a gentleman. And they told Sonny to go fuck himself. And then Sonny just locked the door and looked at them and said, now you just can't leave. That's true, folks. Now you just can't leave. Think about the balls it takes to say that, to do that to someone, to say that to someone. And the beauty was, the beauty was it, I'll never forget the look on their faces because they knew that instant they walked into the wrong bar. Wow. A couple of more life lessons. Guns don't make you a tough guy. Remember when Sonny said that? Oh, yeah. He said, hey, you think a gun makes you a tough guy? That doesn't make you a tough guy. He goes, I've seen a lot of tough guys wet the bed. He goes, it's when the other guy has a gun <laughs> and he pulls it on you. And now we see who the real tough guy is. Another lesson. And I think the final one, Pimp, has got to be the door test. Oh, yeah. The classic. Oh, yeah. Which is a classic which I wrote 34 years ago, which people talk about today. I'm walking down the street, somebody else, hey, Chaz, my wife passed the door test. <laughs> you know, once in a while I get a, a, a nut who says, hey, Chaz, my wife failed the Mario test. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe they say that. <laughs> But um, the door test, and, and that works, and that works. It's a good metaphor for respect. It's a good metaphor for respect. I know people say, but, but I have the, uh, you know, they have the electric, uh, electric uh, the light. Um, power locks. The now. power yeah. locks. And so I say, look, but a girl has to at least hit the power lock and hit it a few times. So look like she's trying to help you. Something. She's got to do something, anything. Life is about effort. Life is about effort, pimp. But the door test works, folks. And I got to tell the ladies out there and the guys, there was another test that I wanted to put in the movie, but Bob thought it, it was too much, and he was right. And that is the test for the ladies. 
And the test is when a guy drives you home and he drives you to your door and you get out of the car and he watches you walk towards your front door, if he leaves before you get in the door and shut the door and put on the light, done, he's gone. And that's his test. So a guy, when he drops you off, he's got to wait. It would be nice if he got out and walked you to the door or say he didn't do that. I'm, I'm okay with waiting in the car, just watching you. That's all right. You got to get in that door, shut it, walk inside, and then he could pull away. If your boyfriend leaves before you pull in, dump him, <laughs> dump him. It ain't going to work. So those are some of the life lessons from a Bronx Tale, folks. Thank you so much. We had a great show today. Remember, subscribe. I'm giving away five of these vintage-like posters. When I hit 20,000 subscribers, I'm giving away five posters to five subscribers. So subscribe to the channel. Uh, don't forget, if you want to see my one-man show, I'm doing it all across the country, the whole United States. Go to chazpalmentary.net. Uh, you want to see my TV series, Godfather of Harlem, on Epics. It's a great series with Forrest Whitaker, Vincent D'Onofrio, Paul Savino, Giancarlo Esposito, and myself. Go to that. It's just a wonderful episode. Uh, so many things to talk about, and uh, if this was fun. Right, Pimp? Life lessons from a Bronx tale. It's always a good conversation. I love always it, man. Always a good conversation. I love it. God bless you all, and see you next week.